Welcome to The Biggest Solution in the Universe, the show where we discuss every solution in the universe from seafood to hot nudes. With over <laughs> 5 million downloads, this is the only show where you decide what should or shouldn't be on the biggest list of solutions. I'm Maddox, with me is Dick. Hey. And Sean, our audio engineer. Hello. How would seafood be a solution to anything? If you're hungry. <laughs> oh, man, that's a weak-ass solution. What are you talking Hey, seafood's great. Seafood's delicious. And you know what's a Chicks problem? Chicks love sushi. Chicks do love sushi, That's right? True. Yeah. And, and you take them to sushi dinner. That leads to hot nudes, buddy. Okay. Yeah. Every time I've taken a chick to sushi, hot nudes. Anyway. Hot um, nudes. First episode, season two. Welcome back. Thank you for supporting the show, guys. Uh-huh. But since this is a continuation, we should talk about the solutions from last season. Yeah. The biggest solution in the universe from last time. Was flight. Hey, good. Flight. The system works. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good... Ad- Why are you upset by that? Well, it's not a contest. It's, it's, That's a good solution. No, no, I know, be- because it's not the biggest solution from last... I think 3D printing is a, is a, um, a superset, right? Because you can 3D print a plane. You can 3D print well, who's uh, rocket fly parts. It, you? I'll fly it. <laughs> oh, man, I would love to see that. Yeah. You ever heard of the Wright brothers? <laughs> you know, they don't really like cutting in line at the airport. <laughs> Let me tell you about how tower control works. Yeah, don't need to because I'm a pilot. You will be arrested. I'll walk right in. 3D printing and then lifting. Lifting at last? No. And then Bill Gates. Bill uh, Gates was. <laughs> maybe if Bill Gates put on some mass, Bill he would have scored a little higher. You know, Bill, why do you, why'd you guys, why didn't you guys vote Bill Gates higher? I think it's because people don't like a person representing a solution. There was some blowback about that in the comments. Oh, really? Yeah, you're, because it's he's not as like you don't you don't have like a, a loose screw when you're like, hey, hand me a Bill Gates. He's just like a guy who yeah. is there developing software. Yeah, but he had some unique ability. Okay, Dick, you don't like guys as solutions. I have a little. Thank you. Yeah. For you. Oh. <laughs> it's been a while since I've yeah. heard this rebrand. It's been a bit. while. Yeah. Yeah. What? Ah, we don't like uh, people as solutions. Uh, well, let's uh, let's listen back. Let's see. Uh, I hate when you bring in a person as a solution. <laughs> yeah, you said Ronald that Reagan is now my solution. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, yeah. And then you said Ronald Ronald Reagan is now my solution. Yeah, yeah. but he said I hate it when you bring in people <laughs> yeah. for a solution. That was a joke. Oh, that was oh. a joke because you were pulling uh, sandbaggery, as you always do, uh-huh. by having me bring in GPS satellites when you yourself were bringing in satellites. You love this idea of sets and supersets and he's, the yeah. solutions I was just going to say that. He's, a one, he's a one-upper. Yeah. It's, you're, a, you're a supersetter. <laughs> That's a big problem. Every <laughs> time setter. anybody brings in a solution, you don't do this in the problem episode, which is funny. It's mm. interesting. Mm. You bring in a superset of yeah. the solution. That's your argument every yeah, yeah. time. Now, uh, look. <laughs> Ronald <laughs> Reagan, is, by is, the way, Ronald Reagan, uh, uh, <laughs> he, uh, go on. he started the some kind of federal organ donation thing like he made it legal for you to donate your kidneys which we spoke about in the last problems episode How yeah about but, it, that? but it was all about that it was all musical instruments to churches though what do you mean it was that kind oh, of organ yeah i'm sure up. he and, got mixed and up sure, and i'm sure there were plenty of organs from people who were dying from aids because he didn't think it was a problem and wouldn't fund it and didn't address it hey wear a condom <laughs> yeah yeah you, ah! <laughs> you motherfucker uh, anyway um i also have i also have before we go on and guys we're doing the big apple contest oh, the big yeah. apple eating contest we teased a long time ago thank god it's happening we can finally determine scientifically whether or not red delicious apples are mealy as fuck yeah right yeah great and i i'm going to i bet that they are more delicious than, than the majority of the apples on the list. So you're shooting for the ultra high bar of 50%. <laughs> you're shooting for a D minus. You know what? That, but that's the argument. Like people th- think it's the worst apple. Uh, they, and they don't, they don't split hairs when they say that. They, think, they say it's the worst apple yeah. unequivocally. I think they're idiots. Okay. Yeah. You guys. I don't I think, think it'll get in the idiots. top 50. I don't of all the, the apples uh, we're sampling. It's, it's a bad apple. Yeah. It's, the reputation's not unfounded. I seem to remember a certain uh, person whose name begins with an M saying that he found a couple mealy ones the other day. Yeah. So is that true? He's yeah, talking about I did, you. I did find. Yeah, it was me. I know. <laughs> I know. I did. You know what? Yeah, that you can get a mealy fucking apple. Great. One mealy red delicious does not make the entire batch mealy. Yeah, and one non mealy red delicious apple doesn't make the whole thing. Oh, non-mealy. you know what? The battle of the pedants. <laughs> you know what, buddy? I got a fucking I got a boatload of red delicious apples. I can hit you in the face with them. You'll say, like, "Oh, that wasn't mealy at all." You'll get a bruise. I'll be like, "What did you just throw cornmeal at me?" 
<laughs> fuck. All this dusty powder all over the place. Dick, um, last time I got a comment here from uh, Nigel Reason. So you were saying that you don't think that Bill Gates is a solution or yeah. people are solutions. No, because, I don't think so. Uh, because you say that, uh, oh, well, someone else could have done what they did. Someone else could have come along. Like Usually NASA. did. Usually yeah. it's a bunch of people working in tandem and somebody happens to beat everyone out. Well, this fan, Nigel, like, Nigel, Re- what? Yeah. Well, like the Russian space program beat us on pretty much everything except getting a guy to the moon. Yeah. Right. Well, like the most important part is. <laughs> well, most they, important? The I most been, important. Okay. Then bring in, bringing a guy to the moon as a solution and we'll yeah. see what part was most important. Yeah. I'll, t- I'll, t- I'll address that in a second. But a fan, Nigel Reason, uh, brought, he said, uh, he linked to this, this YouTube clip. He said, this is Dick's argument in a nutshell. Uh, Listen to this. You've never written anything ever. What about Planet Pitch? <laughs> First of all, that's not Death Claw. Dude, you yeah. never even completed one song either. Well, that's not to say I'm not capable of writing a song. <laughs> In this case, it is to say that you're not capable of writing. But I could have written any Death Claw song. I could have written any of them. But you didn't write it. You didn't, yeah, though. but I could have. But you didn't. But I could have. <laughs> <laughs> that I was that from show. Metalocalypse. Yeah. yeah. That was your argument in a nutshell. You said, well, they could have. Here's when a person is not a solution, okay? If somebody gets the gold medal uh, in the Olympics. Like Bruce Jenner. Sure. Yeah. Like Bruce Jenner. If you get the gold medal in the Olympics for running the fastest lap or whatever, uh-huh. it's something that everyone is trying to do. And they're all trying to do the exact same. They all, they're they all trying to accomplish the exact same goal. Yeah. They're not innovating anything. It's just one person is going to be the fastest no matter what. Uh-huh. They're not a solution. The solution is when somebody has some innovation and ingenuity and they bring... <laughs> That to solving a problem. Like Caitlyn Jenner. You think so? What? What do you mean? The sex change. I don't know. That's innovative, right? No No gold medal winner has ever done that before. Well, that's that's true. (laughs) Caitlyn Jenner is the solution. No one's trying. No, but uh, Bill Bill Gates, like if you create an entire industry, Uh right? That's something that, uh, that... didn't exist before. Yeah. So he's he did that. He this did. is like after the fact loss. Like your your problem ranked last. So you bring in all these reasons to try to pop it up out of the negatives, right? No, it doesn't matter. The votes the votes in. We the see votes the votes in. Well, the votes in. You guys are stupid idiots. And uh, go go ahead and enjoy. You know what? Why don't you live in a world without without Microsoft without Bill Gates? OS Warp. That'd be a pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Remember? Did you ever use that? Did you ever use OS Warp? You seem like you might have used it. No, I've never used OS Warp. I think the guy who, who, what, Linus Torvalds, who came up with Linux, probably did more for computers than Bill Gates. I don't know, though. Well, possibly, but uh, he didn't create as much, he didn't stimulate the economy as much. Programming probably would have been better for that. What? Instead of Bill Gates, yeah, like computer program. That would have been a, that would have yeah, been, been much better. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I have here. Let's let's just quickly go over the top ten solutions. All right, because we finished the the first season. Here okay. are the top ten solutions. Rounding up the first season, uh, number one was nuclear power. Okay, that's one for me. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, next. Nuclear power. Then we had kicking ass. Okay, that's yeah. one for you. Cool. Uh, then we had which crit- which was about video games. What, kicking ass? Yeah, basically. Oh, Remember about that my, one? About my dad. Yeah, but then it was also about how modern day kicking ass oh, yeah, is yeah. video games. Yeah. 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 Pretty cool. It was funny. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> then we had critical thinking. Okay, yeah. you again. Me. Meat. Oh, boy. You again. Oh, yeah. shit. Genetic engineering. Ah, me. All right. I'll give you that. You know, that was a good one. Uh, income-based fines. <laughs> ridiculous, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, ridiculous. Let me tell you, ridiculous, okay. asshole. The, yesterday, I just saw, I was, um, I was Max, at a mall. we have a lot of Apple testing to get through. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Then you blame this on this Mercedes driver who uh-huh. parked in a handicap stall. Walked out, just walked right out, no no placard or anything, and he looked like a real hot shot. Mm-hmm. And, and, I thought, and I looked at the sign, it said $250 minimum fine, and I thought, yeah, 250 bucks means jack shit to him. That's why income-based fines are important. Maybe these, he was handicapped. He was not fucking handicapped. Not with that big swinging dick he was walking around with. Um, then we had... Uh, that was a really weird place to go right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, I didn't. Yeah. There's some kind of penis envy, I think, going yeah. on with this. He just assumes he has a huge swinging dick. That's and metaphorical. That not handicapped. Yeah. That's metaphorical. He's, he's just cutting the line. He's just cutting the parking line. Like if, if he, the parking lot is a line, he's just cutting the line. I think you would like that. He's yeah. a quadriplegic, but he has a huge cock. He's fine. <laughs> he took the last handicapped spot, and he didn't have a handicap placard. He's not handicapped. Well, yeah, he's he's an asshole. He's an asshole. He's a rich asshole. All right. Then we have which is, which is even worse, I guess. Yeah, somehow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because because he's okay. Well, we won't get What's into. What's next? That. 
Okay, so we got uh, then euthanasia. That was you two. Right. Yeah, euthanasia. Cool. Uh, refrigeration. Me. Yes, good. And then we had. <laughs> oh, why is that? Why is it's that a buzz? Silly. Silly. Silly? It should be on the list Are of solutions. Are you enjoying your cooled kombucha green tea it's over there? It's not kombucha, dickhead. <laughs> Um, it's refrigeration is definitely a solution. Nothing not was euthanized 10. to get you this beverage. That's unfortunate. <laughs> then we had so, <laughs> then, then we, <laughs> uh, what would you buy if it was you? Someone was euthanized to bring you this. What would you buy? Like diamonds are a great item for you because someone was definitely murdered to yeah. give you that diamond. It means a lot, like right? <laughs> someone gave their life for this. I appreciate yeah. the Hoover Dam more because there are ghosts. The ghosts of the fallen construction workers. What do you mean? Who made who Hoover Dam? Yeah, one of the biggest engineering projects of mankind. Yeah, right. Uh, uh, what like two three guys died during the construction? Maybe twenty. I don't know. Yeah, you must off you of must it. jack off at the Great Wall. <laughs> 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 Shut up, Sean. All right, then we got soap. I'll give you a ding. That's that. me. That yeah. That oh, here it is. Here's the tie Why maker that? or breaker. Yeah, tie maker or breaker. What is you it? guys? Number 10, free birth control. Shit. Yeah. Oh. Damn it. Oh, I Biggest lose. solutions. Biggest solutions. Um, yeah, thanks for voting, guys. Super important. We're, con- we're conducting this experiment. Thanks for buying, more importantly. I have one voicemail. Since we're going to have this Apple experiment right now, yeah. correct? I got somebody, a, an Apple scientist, conducted their own Apple <laughs> oh, yeah. experiment. Yeah, <laughs> okay, well, let's, let's prepare. This. I want to play this while we prepare. Randy, Ra- Randy, Bobandy, get everything ready over there. Let's, let's be ready to eat these apples. Hello, this is Pump Action Fist at the Maddox Institute of Armchair Psychology, and I have devised an experiment to end all experiments. With me, I have two apples. I have a red delicious and a gala. In a moment, I I will bite in to one of each, and based on the noise, I'm sure Maddox will be able to tell you which is the hipster apple (laughs) and which is the red delicious. All right? Let's hear it. Uh, Using Android... Microphone technology on the phone. I'm about to bite into the first apple. Please take a listen. Good mics. You all right? Okay. Allow me a moment to clean my palate and take a bite on the second apple. Very scientific. Second apple coming up. Oh, it was the first one. You (laughs) mealy. All right. Please take a moment to determine if the first apple was the red delicious. Or the second Definitely apple with the, the red first delicious. one. Mm-hmm. I'll give you just a moment to ponder. Garrett, okay, we got it, dude. We can edit <laughs> this. If the second apple was a red delicious, yeah. you would be correct. Uh huh. There you go. This yeah. has been brought to you by the Maddox Institute of Armchair Psychology. Stupid. Oh, pretty good. Betty it's wasn't even so blindfolded. All right, let's do it. Yeah, Betty wasn't even blindfolded. We're blindfolding ourselves for this test. So we've got a bunch of apples that Sean picked up on the way over here so Maddox didn't, like, secretly stack the deck by getting shitty ones. Eight eight apples, right, Randy? And we got the names of them. We have uh, we have a gala. We have Rome apples. We have uh, Sean helped pick For them up. For anybody who likes lady. jacking off to apples as much as these two do, here's all the names he, of the apples. He brought in his beloved Red Delicious, which he's probably injected with something. Oh, you brought in your own? Like yeah. He did. <laughs> I don't trust. I, okay. I sent that email. I said I don't trust Sean to to know an apple from his asshole. I don't trust you because you might bring in something that looks like a stem stuck in a fucking abalone from your third world <laughs> bazaars that you buy things yeah, from. That's the true. fuck are you talking about third world bazaars? <laughs> I brought in the uh, Christmas. welcome, Offendi. Here's <laughs> this a prize apple that's the size of a bowling ball. Yeah, it was crisp. It was delicious. You know what? You'll find out in just a second. We're all gonna find out, aren't we? What else did you get, Sean? We have a Granny Smith in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Granny Smith. Uh, Pink Lady. Gold, Golden Delicious. Yes. Pink Lady. Pink lady. Honey Crisp. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think there's a, a Gala or Gala, however you want to say it. I, it's gala. A, uh, there's, a, gala. There's, a, yeah. there's a Roma. Get it? Yeah, there's, I get it. <laughs> Definitely a Roma. It's, right. Ro- it's Rome. I thought it was Rome. Oh. How do you pronounce it? It's just spelled, spelled like Rome, like the city. Is it? I yeah. thought there was an A at the end. No, R-O-M-E. It's Rome. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, right. it's Rome And apple. we've cut them into cubes, and now we'll be distributing them and eating them. Right, correct. We're all eating the same apple at the same time. Okay, and none of us look. We're all we're all blindfolded. This is apple A. Okay, all we're t- completely blindfolded. We got yeah, we got to put our hands mm. out. There we go. Okay, pretty gross. It's disgusting. That right. is mealy as fuck. I'm gonna I'm gonna call that right now. I'm gonna call that the golden delicious. Golden delicious. Oh, okay. Yeah. I know which apple that is. All right. I give this a nine on the mealy as fuck meter. Uh, so okay, we're rating this on crispiness. 10 is the crispiest. 
One is the mealiest, okay? okay? I'm just rating them on what we like. That was fucking disgusting. That was right. disgusting. Okay. I'd rather eat shit than eat that apple. I, I, that. <laughs> That's severe. Yeah. <laughs> on crispiness, I would give that, okay. What okay. would you give it? Uh, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not going you to. You hide your answers. I'm not copying off you. Of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but there's that psychological effect where you hear someone else's answer and it, it biases yours. I gave my answer though. No, but not, not the number. I'm oh, writing down okay. the number. I already yeah. wrote down my number. Okay. All right. We're ready for the next one. Oh, much crispier. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Hmm. I know what this one is, too, suckers. I'm going to win this. Eight out of eight. 100%. I know what. I, I'm writing down the names of these, too. God, you guys really love apples. <laughs> like, I don't even look at the names when I go into the store. I just fill up a bag. Randy, you know, do you know this much about apples? No. I give that a four on the mealiest fuck a meter. Okay. Fine. You thought that was mealy? Well, it could be better. Yeah. It could be crispier. Oh, it was sure. a little soggy. You know, I'm grading these like uh, boobs. Yeah. Similar. You don't want your boobs crispy. I want them a little bit crispy. Yeah, Randy. But not Randy too asked, crispy. <laughs> hide, your, hide your shit. Ra- Randy asked how sa- how sandy it is. Let's get the let's, let's get, get apple next C. Next apple. Randy's apple doing C. A piss poor job of hiding the apples from us. Oh, you don't want Randy. To the skin. Oh, that's mealy as fuck as well. That's mealy as fuck, but it's a little bit tastier than apple A. Oh. So, mm. if you like cereal water. Yeah, I'm going to give that an 8 on the mealy as fuck meter. Or maybe a 7. Are you are we rating this? I'm do, I'm rating it on crispiness. I'm just doing the inverse of what you're doing. That's okay. Fine. All right. You're being positive. I'm being negative. Okay. All right. You got another one, Randy? You got, like, some uh, some booze so we can clean our palate or something like that? We got water. No, that's yeah. not going to help. Oh. Oh, that is crispy as fuck. Yeah. That is some perky seas. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, yeah. I'm giving that a, a one on the mealy as fuck a meter. Yeah, it was pretty crispy. That was pretty crispy. Yeah. I'll eat that apple all day, every day. I could eat that apple for hours. Pretty good apple. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah, yeah, I catch a drift. <laughs> all right. He fucking no. dicks looking at the no. apples. I thought oh, we were blindfolded Randy, there, cup, buddy. <laughs> cup your goddamn hand when you do that. Mm. That's real real gross. No flavor. Fucking dick. Fucking through the contest. Right? You saw what fucking apple it was, you fuck. What are you talking about? I didn't about? see shit. You are real paranoid. The flavor of that one was bad, though. The mealiness was high. But it wasn't as soggy and shitty as the first apple. No, the first one to me was by far the worst. The worst. I'm going to give that one an eight on the mealy's fuck meter. All right. I'm writing extensive notes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what is that, a peach or a pear? Oh, my gosh. The is that is a pear? This? That's a fucking oh, pear. That's a pear, you asshole. That's a pear, Randy. Randy! Well, it's not Randy's funny. control failed. That's a 10. <laughs> That's a 10 on the Melius yeah. fuck meter. Glad I left that number open. I still would rather eat that than either the first apple or the one we had previously to that. Well, so it's like, it's very mealy, but uh, it uh, it tastes like a pear. It's not necessarily bad. It's not necessarily good. It's just different, right? Great review. <laughs> tastes like a pear. It tastes like a pear. pear tasted like a pear. I don't know. It's like comparing apples and pears. <laughs> Literally. Hmm. Right. I don't turn this one. This one is moderate. This sure. crispy. Yeah. The flavor is good though. Tastes yeah. like a sponge soaked in apple juice. Yeah, that's that's a delicious apple. I give that a six on the Melius fucking meter. How many how many more apples we got left? Ten. One, one. more. <laughs> one more. This is the final. <laughs> this is the most. Oh, oh one. One okay. more. All right. Because we had the pear control. This All is right. the final apple, guys. How does that sound? Does it sound crispy? That's crispy. Huh. Definitely under a five, but the flavor kind of sucks. Yeah, not crazy about that flavor. All right, my apples are ranked. So we'll uh, we'll we'll decide. We're gonna reveal our answers for which apple was the tastiest, and we'll find out if how how low Red Delicious ranked. Mm, how mealy? Yeah, as fuck. Yeah, they it's are. not mealy as fuck. <laughs> All right, Dick. Should we get some solutions? Yep. Here we go. iTunes. Are you sure you're doing the right episode? Uh huh. That is a solution <laughs> for you. Yeah, iTunes. 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 I love it. The flagship of Apple. 
iTunes. iTunes. Their biggest moneymaker. I smell like this huge is, backhanded. Yeah, compliment. this has got to be <laughs> sarcasm. Like <laughs> iTunes is so bad that it makes you go to another platform. What? So it's that's the solution. Yeah, so, you guys don't knock iTunes. I think, <laughs> oh my <laughs> what? Did you have a stroke? I th- <laughs> Did you fall off your bicycle and hit a curb or something? I think iTunes is a great solution. I'll tell you why. Oh, fuck right? off. Well, this, this is going to be so this. sarcastic. <laughs> thing no, it's, sarcastic. it's already sarcastic. This is from a listener, Max Beard, suggested this solution. <laughs> oh, yeah. Here comes him calling him an idiot next. He said, uh, Max Beard, listener, big big fan of the show. He says it, He said it took him two hours to remove one album from the iPod that was given to him. To replace it with a remastered version. Mm-hmm. I think that's great because it teaches us patience, right? And patience is a virtue. What, are, you, are you like Jesus all of a sudden? <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> Mr. Cutting t- in line? And- <laughs> uh, Steve Jobs is the fucking messiah for Apple zealots. He's Drives the like Jesus a fucking of- asshole. Yeah. I Drive like the driving a samurai. King, like a samurai. A king? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You a think king. everything's yours. Yeah. That's the problem. Oh. <laughs> A King Sam. You know what? People, <laughs> Primus people should Nocturne. appreciate. Primus Nocturne. <laughs> when you're driving, the best thing you can do is get off the road as quickly as possible. That's what I'm doing, buddy. <laughs> okay. Wait, listen to this. More iTunes. Back to iTunes, the solution, right? This is insane. Then All right. When, then, <laughs> <laughs> then when you're brought to the brink of insanity, before uh-huh. you find the podcast category you're searching for in the iTunes store... And you're seconds away from putting your fucking laptop through the wall. You'll appreciate Apple for teaching you restraint. I, you know, that's a that's a lesson I learn every time I use my uh, fucking iTunes. I I, I learn restraint. Why think, do you use iTunes? I sometimes I have to to see our our ranking for the podcasts. Oh, there's sites that will rank it. I'll send you. The, there's sites that will collect that information for you. Only you ones I found, and I've searched extensively, is top 100. And unless we're in the top 100, then we're not ranked. Okay. Yeah. Plus, iTunes stimulates the economy. That's right. It's the broken window of computing technology because you have to buy more RAM when the bloated program okay. launches at 50 megs and then slowly creeps up to 200 for no fucking reason. Awesome. Can you do that with like a uh, voice? That takes up 50 <laughs> megs of your RAM shut, on shut your up. computing machine. <laughs> <laughs> My computer goes on 300 megs of RAM. Look, if you, if you have a netbook with two gigs of RAM... That's like 20, uh-huh. that's 20%, no, 10%. That's 10% of the memory on your computer for one program that plays MP3 files. Yeah. And you know what? Here's the memory footprint. Wait, it sucks, though. Then you're saying it sucks. No, no, it's good because then people have to go out and buy more RAM, which stimulates the economy. Okay. Yeah, iTunes, is, it's good. It's good for the economy. I Here's, for comparison, Winamp, the old school Winamp program that I yeah. still run to this day, 32K. 32 kilobytes of memory. Why are you so proud of still running Winamp? Wait, is that what you play your sound effects out of? Uh, no, I don't. But oh, no. I do play the show intro he, out of Winamp. He uses janky soundboard, uh, dot net application to play yeah. those. How did you know? <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> yeah, uh, Winamp, 32K resident footprint. Memory resident footprint. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Then I So iTunes is also great. That is so sexy. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, ooh. Look, iTunes guys, I like iTunes because it's it's great. It gives you yeah. something to do when you're bored. If you don't if you don't use a mobile device to sync music on your computer, then you can hunt through your installed programs for the six different services and applications it installs, trying oh. to uninstall the <laughs> <laughs> You're such a fucking nerd. <laughs> <laughs> trying to uninstall the bloated mobile device service and uninstall it. That's what, you know, one time I uh, we, I talked about how long it took me to install iTunes. Oh, God, on yeah. The, on the show, <laughs> right? And I was like, it took me two hours because I I found an unpacker. You have to find an, an executable unpacker to unpack all the different executables within it. And uh-huh. there are six different programs it installs. Six different services and programs. I'm like, I just want to fucking listen to an MP3. Are you kidding me with this shit? And then the iTunes interface itself is basically just the Safari browser. If you copy the link to an iTunes album, it's just yeah. a URL, and you plug it into the website, and it's the exact same data. Yeah. XML. Well, it is a big solution. I know you're being sarcastic, but yeah, no, it's it definitely is. great for a lot of people. Uh, it's got a lot of failings. The design really sucks, but uh-huh. it seems to work out for most of the world who's not as smart as you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's great. If you don't use Safari, Airport Express, or Apple TV, 
No problem. iTunes will go ahead and install a program called Bonjour that will take up memory and resources so when you buy those Apple products, it's ready for you. They'll be ready to go. And if you never do, you get more hours of entertainment as you hunt down services for your computer to disable. It's Mm -hmm. fun, guys. If you're bored next time, why don't you just go through your service registry and find all those fucking little programs that iTunes installs. Yeah. Bonjour 64 and the iTunes update manager, which is always constantly fucking pulling the server. And then iTunes is also great for keeping the internet safe for kids. Do you, do you see your computer as an extension of your dick? That's a real question. Uh, <laughs> because you talk, you're very defensive of it. You don't yeah, like it okay. being molested yeah. by companies. Like it's like a car guy. Or a gun guy seeing that thing as an extension of their manhood. Do you, you like your dick molested by companies? Well, it depends who which company it is. Let's say it's I guess. Ford. Ford, yeah. Ford I'll take Motors. That V eight hand job. All yeah. right. Yeah. That's a real question. Is I it? think you do. I don't. I've never thought about it that way, dude. I think because you're very proud of your computer yeah. when you get a new one. You it's don't good. like throwing the old ones away. No. Like you left that old one sitting in your yeah. living room. I was keeping track on the show yeah. for like four months. <laughs> yeah, you left it there. I think you have like an emotional attachment to it, where the rest of us just throw it away. Do you have you ever named a computer? Oh, I name all my computers. Okay, there we yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I name my hard drives. Are you kidding me? Mystery. <laughs> you name your hard drive. Yeah, my my E drive is called Fat Bitch. <laughs> Because it's a big, fat bitch. It's a big, fat bitch of a drive. Do you talk to it when they're processing data? No. That's not crazy. It's my fat bitch. I'll talk to my guns. Here's why I keep my old computers laying around. Usually because, first of all, they're they're pretty damn fast. My old computer that I retired finally after eight years. Retired like a racehorse. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Is still faster than new Macs that people are buying today. He's put it out to stud. Yeah. (laughs) Put it out in the yard. (laughs) Hey, everybody, come check out this computer. It has all the RAMs you need to run Four instances of applications for Bonjour and iTunes. Get out of here. My old computers are still faster than new computers you can buy today from the Mac store. Okay. Because it's so optimized. I I optimize every piece and component in my computer. I like to have efficient computers to run well. So even though my computer today is way faster than my old computer, my old computer is still very fast, and I still use it for rendering. I create like a little rendering farm. Several times I've been editing, working on a project late at night. Uh, it's actually for the bonus show. So I was I had to edit some footage together and also render the motion graphics for the bonus show. Oh so my I God. right booped up booted up my old computer, let that start rendering, and it renders a little bit slower than my new computer, but that's fine because at least my processor is free for editing on my main computer. <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad you put that in there. I was really losing track of the story. <laughs> and then I heard, wait, is someone getting made fun of? Okay, yeah. I'm listening. Guys, iTunes, iTunes is really good for keeping the internet safe for children, guys. We need, we need the internet safe for kids. If you want to release a podcast with a no-no word in the title, iTunes will make sure that your oh. podcast will get delisted from their network. You know yeah. what I'm talking about, Dick? Well, yeah, we, yeah. Were, we were warned by Rob at Libsyn to take the explicit, uh, to take any swear words out of our titles and descriptions, right? Yeah, because yeah. one of our recent episodes had... The, the, pro, the problems were fuckface Donald Trump. Unnecessary. And yeah. shitting in the shower. <laughs> yeah. Both of those are no-no words. We can't have those on iTunes. We got to keep, we gotta keep uh, well, iTunes that safe seems for kids. Fair. It was not shitting in the shower. <laughs> no, no. Oh, what was it? <laughs> it was having to take a shit shitting after the shower. shower. Oh, God. Shitting oh. in the shower is a solution. <laughs> oh, excuse me all the hell. <laughs> yeah. It's efficient. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, I agree. So, and, and iTunes also keeps it safe for kids because there's no adult content in the app store. Do you have a problem with that? No, it's the kind of censorship that gives parents a peace of mind. I like that. I like Do you that. really? No. <laughs> okay, why? For, why don't you have a problem with it, Mr. Libertarian? It's, it's that's, the, that's the most libertarian thing possible. Companies self-censoring themselves because they want to appeal to their market? That's it. That's what libertarianism does. You get a nice, comfortable uh, marketplace with no swearing because customers don't want swearing. Oh, I see. So libertarianism oh, leads to more <laughs> intrusion in your life right, from companies. Is that is that what? Use something else. You don't, you don't like iTunes? Go use Google Play. Yeah, except iTunes has uh, exclusive publishing rights for a number of different albums and books oh, and media no. and content. You can't listen to your precious music. Uh, it's called jerk. a monopoly. You're that's you're shifting the goalpost. That's called a monopoly. When, it, when a company has exclusive rights to publish something and then their platform is shitty, that's why I had a problem with Facebook is because over 40% of all internet traffic is becoming Facebook. Once it hits that tipping point of 50%, 
Well, guess what? Facebook sun- suddenly becomes a monopoly. And if si- Facebook <laughs> censors something, if Facebook yeah. censors something, it's no longer this free and open market because there's no alternative to Facebook. Yeah. You can't really, okay, what am I going to use? MySpace? Like, there's nothing out there. Bing? What, uh, <laughs> Google? Google Plus? Come on. Just get a life and don't use Facebook. Dick, I hate Facebook, and I would I would kill my account in a heartbeat, but it is so ubiquitous that we cannot survive today as content creators and media creators without Facebook. Mm-hmm. It's one of the number one ways people find content online, and I hate it. I hate it for that reason. I, well, I hate it for many reasons, but I hate that reason about it. But you love iTunes because... Oh, because it's great. You can spend time reading a book with your child. Or chatting with your loved ones while you wait for the 18 updates iTunes typically rolls out in one year for that fucking shitty application. Gotta be secure, man. Yeah, oh, it's real secure. There's this article on QZ.com. It says, I hate iTunes, and I think Apple does too. And this was written by someone who's a huge Apple acolyte. He loves Apple. And he said that a long time ago, his college roommate was having trouble with his Windows PC. He's like, dude, you gotta switch. You gotta make the switch, man. Everything just works on an Apple. So his buddy switched over to Apple. Mm-hmm. And he, he, he said that um, after years of him, his friend calling him up, asking him how to fix problems with his, with his uh, Mac, finally he threw in the towel when his friend called him up. He goes, it's too hard to transfer music to my iPod on iTunes. And he goes, yeah, I agree. It's a piece of shit. And then he wrote this huge article about how awful iTunes is, uh, which... I mean, that's his opinion. I think it's great because, again, it gives you time. It gives you time to spend with your loved ones. I like it. Yeah, all right. I think you should have brought this in as a problem. No, what? Because it's, it's a very problematic <laughs> piece of software. Hey, you know what, man? Nothing's, it's not perfect. It's not, I could bring iTunes in as a problem, too. We're not talking about the problems with iTunes today. We're just talking about how iTunes as a solution teaches you patience, teaches you restraint, hmm. gives you time to do things, gives you things to do. It's fun to uninstall program. I love it. I love it. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> Are you done? So every one of your points is just how much time it wastes. Yeah. It's like you can spend time doing this. You can spend time doing this. Well, so that's a very negative this. way of looking at it, Sean. <laughs> I, I think it's very. It's a pause. I'm spinning a positive, uh, a positive view on this. I think it's great. Look forward to episode 82 when he brings this in as a problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are you going to bring in as a problem? Like uh, vaccines? You know, you could look, man. There's positives and negatives to be argued on just about anything. Just uh. about anything. Uh, just because something is a problem or a solution doesn't mean it doesn't have any drawbacks. Okay, well, I have a... Are you done? I'm done. I've got a solution that has no drawbacks. Oh, yeah? Let's hear this. Fire. Fire! Has anything bad ever happened because of fire? <laughs> <laughs> I brought in... Didn't I bring in forest fires? Yeah, I brought in, like, wildfires. Uh, people cause for it. Fires don't cause forest fires. People cause <laughs> fire. <laughs> forest fires. Lightning. We do, what's the one thing that makes us different from animals? The one thing? The one thing. Computers. That, okay, the two <laughs> things that make us different from animals. Uh, we drink milk from another animal. Clothes. No, I, milk, uh, are, don't animals feed other animals milk? Of Aren't course. They, like in the zoo, isn't there always some dumb lion that like mm. takes in a squirrel? They and there's, can, but no. <laughs> <laughs> a squirrel sucking on that big old lion teeth. Yeah, having sex facing each other, I guess that's one. Okay, what's the four things... What's the fourth thing that makes us different than animals? We go to the moon. Okay, five things. <laughs> five things. You know what we need to get to the moon? Well, a shitload of fire. Yeah, uh, True or false? Okay. True or false? Without fire, there would be no NASA. Uh, <laughs> the ability to conceptualize fire. You see, it's a, super, it. it's a super it's a set, super of, set yeah. of all your stupid problems, except maybe iTunes. Uh, iTunes fire. and fire, the perfect combo. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. You should definitely burn iTunes, and then it gives you warmth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this was saying that we, as early as uh, 1.6 million years ago, we discovered fire? That's a long time ago. Yeah, but there's that, some that There's like some kind estimate. of controversy. Well, no, they found, like, fire pits from that long ago. It's certainly an estimate. Yeah. Maybe they're <laughs> off by a couple of years. <laughs> they didn't give they didn't give the date that yeah. the fire happened 1.6 million years I mean, ago. I don't know where were they looking at uh, Black Rock Desert and uh, and Burning Man? What, like I'm sure they're finding fire pits out I, there all over the I imagine place. it was Africa. But, I don't bunch think of hippies? it was Burning Man. Bunch of African hippies maybe. How hey, do they know lions didn't start those fires? 
Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. I don't know. Vines might might have started fires, become an advanced civilization, then decided, you know what? This is too dangerous. Let's, hey, let's rein it in. You're not far off. It turns out that monkeys, <laughs> monkeys <laughs> have some kind of cognitive ability <laughs> to conceptualize of the ideas of fire, and they prefer cooked meat. Huh. How about that? Yeah. How about, yeah, why don't you shove that in your pipe and smoke it, all these raw diet idiots? Oh, they raw meat though. They don't eat raw meat, do they? No, they don't. They well, they eat sushi and carpaccio. Yeah. Okay, but not. I remember raw meat. you uh, you brought in that the bra- the human brain developed more quickly when we started eating meat. Yeah. And yes. Fire was a big another part of super that. set. Another super set, Sean. It also shrunk our mouth holes. So maybe in my case, it went a little too far, <laughs> but it shrunk our mouth holes and our teeth and our intestines. So, so without you're fire, serious about that. Yes. No, I, no, I yeah. knew it was true. I thought you were so fucking around. Without but. fire, all, all people would look like giant like Venus flytrap mouths, and we'd have like, I don't know, six miles of intestines sloshing around to digest all this food. They'd look it like would look St- disgusting. You'd look like Steven Tyler. Yes. <laughs> Everyone would be fat with organs and yeah. would have Steven Tyler's mouth. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's a big mouth. That makes me blush. Hey, look Look what else you can do with fire. <laughs> Cook plants and animals. What? Clear Clear forests for planting yeah, your shit you can, and yeah. hunting. Yeah. yeah. Fuck forests. Yeah, right? Fire, I'll agree with that. Number Biggest weapon against Mother Nature. Fire. Agent Orange. <laughs> yes. Also requires fire to work. You can heat, heat treat your stone for making... Stone tools. You yeah. can make glue with mm-hmm. fire. That's more hunting. You can't kick ass without someone, something to stab someone with. Yeah. Line cutting is a problem. Give them a shank yeah. with, a, with a tool <laughs> that you made with a fire. Well, you're bringing that into the airport, and the TSA is going to confiscate it. That's your problem, Dick. Mm-hmm. It's a cultural spear. Oh, it's part oh, of my oh, cultural culture. heritage. Oh, they'll allow that. Yeah, you can bring on anything. Any cultural weapons is totally fine. Yeah, man. You tie, you tie a little uh, uh, Native American ribbon on your pistol, your shotgun, your musket, anything. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's cultural. Yeah, bring it's it right It's cultural. In. It keeps predators away. Mm. Right? Fire? Yeah. Get a bunch of mountain fire. They don't understand. Yeah. They don't understand what this fire is. They don't like it. Yeah. You know, mountain lions, mosquitoes. Easily, easily the biggest problem in the universe, mosquitoes. Not we even haven't close. brought them in. We haven't brought them in. Not even the close. worst, the worst problem. Would you rather have a mosquito scare or an AIDS scare? AIDS scare. Definitely mosquitoes. No. <laughs> <laughs> mosquitoes can turn into an AIDS scare. Uh no. Can't they? Nope. What if they're sucking? AIDS blood, and then they hit that you. That doesn't happen. What do you mean it doesn't I mean, happen? They, that does, they, you cannot get, there's never been an instance of AIDS being transferred to someone through a mosquito bite. How would you know? Because scientists know. Like, they've, they, this has been a, 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 this was a fear of the, during the AIDS epidemic in the 80s, where people were really afraid of mosquitoes, and they thought we might all have to stay indoors, et cetera, et cetera. They found that uh, the AIDS virus, I think the AIDS virus doesn't live long enough inside the mosquito for it to transfer to a human. AIDS, AIDS actually outside of the human body doesn't live very long. It's like, un, uh, you know, under like 15, 20 minutes, something like that. Maybe they're evolving. The mosquitoes. Well, okay, I guess. <laughs> Go board up mosquitoes when Dick brings it in. <laughs> Burning witches? You can't burn a witch That's true. without 26% of Americans believe in witches. Remember, we yeah. covered this. You can't yeah. burn witches without a fire. Yeah. Burning effigies, the best way to make your point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It is a good argument. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'll, see, I'll see that argument. I'll see that rhetorical debate, and then I'll raise you this burned effigy. <laughs> yeah, what are they going to do? Yeah. Burn two effigies? I already burned one. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I already, I win. You can burn a, a, a warehouse full of effigies. How about that? Then you nope. win for sure. Same statement. Uh, I win. I did it first. Looks uh, desperate. Looks desperate with the whole warehouse. One of my favorite things on the internet, and this has to do with fire, is there are these videos of people who are protesting America in different countries, mostly the Middle East, and they're trying to burn the American flag, and every now and then it falls on them, and <laughs> they'll catch themselves on fire. Yep. It's the funniest fucking thing. That's God. It's That's great. what God's doing. You try to burn our fucking flag, God will rain down upon you, oh. flaming America. Yeah. Uh, steril- uh, did I say this one? Sterilizing, uh, sterilizing tools? Sterilizing medical tools? How they don't. That? They don't use fire to sterilize medical. They tools. did at one point. Yeah, <laughs> back when people, the mortality rate was, rate was sky high. Hey, for, uh, how much? What percentage of energy is made with fire? Coal, thirty nine percent. Natural gas, twenty seven percent. That's like two thirds of the energy on Earth comes from fire. Oh, that's pretty good. Comes from fire. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah. How much? How much energy comes from Bill Gates? 
Uh, probably very little. Probably very little. He's decomposing, I suppose. Oh, wait, he's still alive. He's isn't still he? alive, yeah. So he's sucking energy down. He's you're costing us energy. You're sucking energy down, dickhead. <laughs> you're sucking, you're probably sucking in more energy than, than Bill Gates. God, I would hope so. You are. That would be, do you think so? Really? He's Absolutely. got yachts and houses. Well, you've got I'm more one guy muscle in mass. You, you got to eat more to keep that muscle mass on. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Uh, I one, don't know how you fit it all in that tiny little mouth of yours. <laughs> 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 I shove it up my ass at the oh, same time. Okay, so I'm eating smart. from both ends. That's, that, that solves your problem with shading after you shower. Stop doing that, man. So he's shoving two. hot dogs up his ass. <laughs> no, I don't, shave, I don't shove dick-shaped oh, things up my ass. Oh, That's really? gay. No bananas. Yeah. And oh, no, I, just, no. I just figured it was no exclusively hot dogs, Popsicles. No, no, too gay. Only non-dick-shaped things. I, cheeseburgers. Go-gogurts. I'll shove a cheeseburger up my ass. <laughs> Pretzels, I'll shove a pretzel up my ass. Churros, no, fuck no. Chorizo, maybe. <laughs> what, like a big two ground up, yeah, meat? yeah. The, right the actual up, sausage yeah. or chopped up? I'll uh, chop no, it up to the, shove it up. My okay, ass. I won't shove this. Okay, that's shove fine. That makes sense. Okay, signaling like Lord of the Rings style, right? What, what, with what, fire, with smoke oh, signals. Yeah. Hey, that's be, cool. Before you go on the energy argument, you can make the argument that one hundred percent of our energy comes from fire because anything solar, the sun is a big fireball. Whoa, I didn't even <laughs> think of that. A hundred percent of our energy. You know what? I, not I, wind, I, though. There he goes. He's super setting. Yeah, he's super setting. You're trying well, to bring the in. Wind, don't, better, don't bring in the, the sun. The sun is basically <laughs> like bringing in a person. Uh, <laughs> uh, the wind, the wind, all the weather effects on Earth happen because we revolve around the sun and it creates our weather pattern. So, yeah, mm-hmm. I would say 100 percent of our energy comes Look, from fire. The weather was invented by the Chinese to <laughs> get an edge in our manufacturing industry. <laughs> okay. Everyone knows that. You can't make liquor and beer without fire, can you? Mm. Nope. Smoking. Yes, you Wait, hold on. Yeah, you can't. Well, if you're OK, taking the sun out of the equation. When apples or grapes ferment, mm-hmm. you don't need fire for that. They just sit there. Grape wine, you don't need fire. Yeah. I don't think. But you can't make liquor about fire. Um, you got to cook that mash, well, baby. Th- that's mm. distilled. Yeah. 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 Wait, what are you What are you saying? No, no, no. You, you need fire for that. Yeah. You don't need fire yeah. for anything fermented. You can, and there are a lot well, of fermented What are you making, alcohols. Pruno? You don't need fire for prison wine. Yeah. But yeah. Want, stuff you yeah. want to drink, you need fire for. Prisoners don't appreciate fire as much as other people. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Cigarettes. Can't smoke a cigarette without fire. That's Cigarettes true. are cool as fuck. S- well, Smoking weed. I can't argue with that. Getting rid cool. of bees. How are you going to get rid of bees without smoke? Good luck. Yeah, you don't need to get rid of bees. You just toughen up. You get a tougher skin like me. I have a huge fucking bee nest outside my place. It's fucking Still. huge. Yeah. <laughs> it, sca- it scares women and children in the postman. Every day, they're, like, they're afraid to stand around my stoop. I love it. <laughs> it's great. Scares away homeless people. I love it. Uh, steam for bending wood and arrows. Are, oh, oh, oh. Here's the greatest part about fire. Yeah. It's the great equalizer. Hmm. You ever tried to start a fire in front of a chick? Yes. Oh, that's the most terrifying thing in, yeah. in the world. Oh, that's man. the most terrifying thing in the world to do. Well, I would rather be in the middle in Chicago in the middle of winter and have a chick look at my dick for the first time than try to start a fire in front of her and fuck it up. You know what I'm saying? I, I got something that scares me even more to do in front of a chick is uh, change a tire. Well, it used to. I'm really good at changing a tire. But so, I, uh, that changed. That <laughs> went from two extremes really fast. Yeah, I, I, I mean, starting a fire in front of a chick and you, and not being able to is really, really embarrassing. And very about, embarrassing. How about getting your chain back on the sprocket. <laughs> what does that mean? Shut up, Shelly. He's riding a bike. <laughs> it's a bike <laughs> reference. Uh, yeah. Great. No, Thanks, it's not Randy. a problem. Have just, you had to change a tire in front of a chick before and it didn't yeah, work out well? Well, one of my first dates, so I'm really good at changing my tire. In fact, I could, we, could, should, we should have a tire off. Oh. Uh, I could change a tire faster yeah, than you, buddy, guaranteed. Probably. Mine have wheel locks on them. So I dated this, uh, this girl a long time ago who... Had this jealous ex who, uh, like, a w- bag of mulch. She was a bag of sand and he was a bag of mulch. <laughs> they were star crossed lovers. <laughs> yeah, real funny. <laughs> okay. So this, so this girl, so this guy's, this, this girl's ex was like really jealous of her and he like kind of stalked her and hung oh, out, man. like, you know, like, anyway, one night I was at her place shit. pretty late, you know, three, four in the morning and I thought, ah, I'm done. I'm going to go home. Mm-hmm. So I get out and I, I start driving my car and I hear this. Dud, 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 dud noise, right? And I get out and I look at my tire and there's a giant, jagged piece of metal jammed like right in the middle of my tire. Okay. And I thought, okay. Um, and then, because because right at, well, I, I thought nothing of it. I thought, oh, maybe I ran something over, except how would I have not heard it when I pulled in? Because I didn't. Hmm. And it's just when I pulled out, right? Yeah. 
Then I get home and she says, oh, hey, my ex came over and we had this talk. He said he had this dream about me, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, well, that's weird because I got a flat tire. Yeah, that is weird. Yeah, real suspicious, Big coincidence. right? Big coincidence. Yeah. So I pull into the 7-Eleven to, to change my tire. And this guy sees me on the way in. He goes, hey, man, you need a hand? I'm like, no, I got it. He goes in, buys like a Pepsi, comes out, tires change. He goes, that's the fastest I've ever seen a tire change. I'm like, yeah, I know. That's pretty fast. Really good. I'm really good at it. I learned from my dad. My dad uh, uh, changes tires. With his bare hands, I'm guessing. Oh, yeah. He doesn't use it. Yeah. So that's for chumps. He pisses on a T-shirt so it's to stiffen it up and then unscrews <laughs> it with his bare hands. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, I, yeah, we could have a tire off. Well, I haven't changed a tire in a long time. I got run flats. I can't change a tire. I got no spare. Oh. Huh. I mean, I could change one, but I can't change the... I'll, uh, we'll change the tires on your car. Next contest. That'll be fun. Yeah. Tire change off. All right, that blacksmithing, you like that? I thought you were going to lead with blacksmithing because that's the manliest occupation. No, Next, I led with stupid Either that stuff. or lumberjacking. <laughs> no. All right, well, your, your turn. That's, that's Sounds fire. like when you like jerk off a piece of oak or something. Lumberjacking. Lumberjacking. Yeah, lumberjacking. yeah, I do every time I jerk off, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I got a real redwood between my legs. <laughs> All right. You want to go for a third one? You want to uh, impress your luck? What? <laughs> Some real lumber. It's a it's a real mill. Should probably lumber. lay off of it. It wouldn't be so red. Oh, 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 oh. oh real funny. Every uh, chick, every chick I bang, say here comes the wood for the lumber mill, baby. Oh, their vagina. Their is vagina the lumber is the mill. lumber mill. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Putting wood in there. All right. Grind off these spurs. Oh man, the ladies. I bet the ladies. The, la the poor ladies listening to the show right now. Their fingers must be tired from di all the diddling they're doing. At these descriptions. <laughs> and, and there went the last two. <laughs> well, now, those two Australian chicks who wanted to bang you are probably still listening. You're having a lot of dynamite drop-ins. I hope so. Yeah. Is, I didn't know this was going to be a romantic episode. Well, let's, uh, let's lose the rest of the ladies, guys, because my biggest solution, my next one, is computer programming. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Computer programming, what a great solution. Okay. Yeah, listen to this, guys. Programming, uh, no joke, though, but pro programming is the backbone of the 21st century. Yeah. Everything we use today requires programming. Would Just, you call it a superset? Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, look, I have brought in problems and solutions that were subsets of other problems and solutions. Right. And the reason is because somebody who's curious, you know, like um, a researcher mm -hmm. or an observer or a scientist – saying, hey, I wonder what the biggest problem is in the universe. They look at our list and they see, boom, right at top, you see the biggest solution is, uh, you know, uh, me. Nuclear power. No, it's, it's me. Uh, oh. Me, I am the biggest solution. And then you see the biggest problem, anti-vaxxers, whatever. But he goes, well, I wonder what's a bigger problem between salt and pepper. Well, you got to mm. have both on the list, but they're both subsets sure. of spices or herbs or yeah. whatever, or seasoning, you know? Anyway. Well, the superset often brings in its own complications. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Because this uh, the subset of people is murderers. Yeah, yeah, big problem. All right, so uh, programming. Everything we use today requires programming. You're listening to this podcast in MP3 format, unless you paid for a burned CD or cassette tape, which we offer that service. If you send, we in should do that. Self addressed, self self addressed stamp yeah. envelope. Yeah, we'll just burn. Randy, you, you want to handle CD? that? You want to handle pressing some LPs of the bonus episodes? Yeah, we'll send out some CDs. Seventeen ninety nine. Yeah, I, I get a lot of letters, handwritten letters from people saying, "I, I don't know what a podcast is." <laughs> uh, even then, a CD requires programming. You can't even press a CD without some programming, some software to do it. Right? Your phone is filled with apps that were coded by someone. The MP3 is encoded using a program. The player you're listening to on this podcast with is a program. Your computer, the internet, Facebook, almost everything digital requires programming today. Everything. I mean, just think of the full implications of everything we use today. And I thought, like, even things that are not remotely related to computer programming, like apples, rely on programming to get to you. Yeah. Right? Every apple sold to you in a large grocery store is inventoried and indexed in a database somewhere. You can't pay for things without a computer program doing its job to ring you up. You wouldn't have my website or this podcast without programming. Programming is the backbone of just about everything. Even us ourselves might just be programs running in a big computer, man. Oh, well, there's those <laughs> they're, they're those uh, physicists, and um, I, they're kind of like new agey. They, they think they're trying to prove. Solipsist, I think they are. Are they? I don't know. Yeah. Um, they're trying to prove if the universe is a hologram. Well, uh, that, I think that, yeah, okay. What? That's a little bit more nuanced than if the world is like, quote unquote, fake, I think. 
proving the world, proving the universe is a hologram. Like if the data in the universe can be represented holographically, I don't have the, I don't have enough knowledge to speak on that. But it's not, it's not specifically if it's like a big fake hologram. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty nuanced, uh, nuanced philosophical and kind of physical argument they're making. But uh, anyway, um, this is from the Guardian. There's a, there's an article that says why kids should be taught to code. And it says, instead of educating children about the most revolutionary technology of their young lifetimes, we have focused on training them to use obsolete, excuse me, obsolescent software products. That, that in, the, in a nutshell, is my computer upbringing in, in school, in high school and elementary school and junior high. They always taught us how to use specific programs. And I remember mm-hmm. my teacher telling, like, we had to spend a week memorizing shortcuts in WordPerfect. Yeah. Anyone listening right now remember WordPerfect? Probably not. WordPerfect was the was the go-to office suite before Microsoft Office. And everyone was taught to kind of memorize these shortcuts. They're like, you really need to know this, and we were tested on it. Yeah. And I didn't take that shit seriously. I wrote this, uh, this um, one of our assignments was to write a resume for a made-up job, an imaginary job. So I wrote, was my, your, mine, was, <laughs> mine was for a cow slaughterer. <laughs> I, I said I had a lot of experience, uh, you know, slitting throats and like uh, skinning animals and, you know, things that would be relevant to a cow slaughter. Uh, today you'd get the police called on you for that <laughs> shit. And you should. It was so professional, though. In Utah, though, that can't be that weird. Right. Yeah. And so I cited sources and everything. Dick, that is the only time in my life I've ever gotten an F in any class. <laughs> any class. My teacher hated me. It was also frustrating for me in that class because at that time, uh, I felt like I could have programmed an app better than WordPerfect for, than, than the one I was using. I was a really proficient programmer back when I was like 16, 17 years old in Utah. My, my programming teacher was teaching us how to do Hello World applications and things in class, which for those who aren't programmers, a Hello World application is the most simple program you can write. It's basically getting the computer to print the words Hello World, right? Yeah, the most basic application. It's something that it's just kind of an, an exercise you do to learn any new language. She was teaching us that kind of stuff. I was in the back of the room programming a video game and making Starfields on an eighty eighty six computer. This is a monochrome. This is those like green, uh, black and black and green computers you see in, in old oh timey seventies movies and come. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Did you get into the mainframe at all with your video game? I did get uh, kicked out of uh, high school and uh, banned from touching a computer. Kicked out of high school? No, uh, suspended. Suspended? I, wow. I got suspended, and I got banned from ever touching a computer again for in what? high school. Uh, How for, long was your quote, suspension? It was for four, three, four days. Was it racially motivated? But it may have been. Oh, good. All right. Always asking the tough questions. Yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> what that. happened? What have happened? I ever talked about my hacking thing on this? No, 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 no. So I was so bored in this class. I had it like an A because I turned in all my assignments immediately. Like the same within the hour that she assigned them, I would be done with it. Mm. So um, I was bored. So I started to create a login screen that was exactly like our normal login screen for class. Fishing. Yeah. All right. Except for the login prompt, when you typed in your password... It still showed up asterisks, right? Except Mm -hmm. it was running on my computer. And it would log that password into my directory and then reboot the computer. So So, straight up malicious hacking. Straight up malicious. It's it's 100% malicious. Well, what am I going to... I mean, it's malicious. The only point of it is to to get around security measures. No, I just harvested passwords, but... Uh, what would be malicious is if I used that those passwords for anything. Like the best, the worst thing I could possibly do in that in that uh, with those passwords, and uh, as far as gain goes, is give me a better grade. But I already had no. An a you could the take class. their passwords and log into their bank accounts because everybody uses the same password. Oh, this was like back in 1996, so oh. like no one was doing online banking or any of that shit. So and, and it was all stupid passwords, anyways. Like one 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 is stupid. Fuck, that's my password. <laughs> <laughs> so I I over the course of the school the semester I got everyone's password including my teachers and uh i you know i was just bored i was just bored with it and so then someone saw me doing it one day and narked on me yeah because i was planning on turning in this program for extra credit at the end of the the school year (laughs) i really was yeah you'll just reward me for how smart idea of how the world works is very deranged and even at a young funny passwords any funny passwords yeah i'm secretly gay that, what? Like I'm secretly gay. <laughs> I'm secretly gay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell anybody. People have confessions as, as their passwords. 
Uh, no, there were a lot of like boyfriends and girlfriend names in there. Um, so mm. the girls, the girls put that their boyfriends. Be, in. That could be juicy. Yeah, if it's not their husband. Oh well, you know? I, I don't think anyone. Well, this was Utah, so a few of them may have been married at this age. But yeah. <laughs> I so anyway, I got called down to the office uh, one day, and I saw my buddy. Good buddy of mine who was my programming partner for a lot of things. We created some demos and things like that. Uh-huh. Uh, and demos, for those who don't know, is kind of like a, a tech demo that you would create to to push the limits of your computer. Super nerd stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we created some demos and stuff. I was walking down to the office because they called me down there. And then I saw him walking down. In Uh-oh. front of me, I'm like, oh, shit, That's they're on it. That's not what you want yeah. to see. Because he's like the only other person in class who really really knew about that stuff. And um, I could have let him take some of the fall because they thought he was the bad guy. Like, everybody loved me uh, in in high school. They, hmm. the, the teachers loved me. They thought I was a really good student. I was very friendly. Um, they, and because I was. And they thought he was putting me up what to What happened? This. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. So they they immediately started blaming him, and he, they, they said, he's denying everything. I said, well, it's not his fault. It's mine. Uh, oh, I took responsibility. Man. And then they said, you signed a form at the, at the beginning of the school year saying that you wouldn't hack or, or subvert our security measures. I said, yeah. no, I didn't. And they said, yes, you did. We have it in our filing cabinet. I said, no, you don't. And they said, oh, do you want us to pull it out right now? I said, well, you can't because it's in my backpack. And they're like, uh, what are you talking about? I said, I never turned that form in. Oh and they God. were pissed. Like, what, is that the smoking gun? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't sign a form saying I won't breach your data security well, network? I, I, I knew I would. <laughs> okay, why? Because I knew I was going to do it. <laughs> I knew I was going to do it, so I, was, I wasn't going to turn this document Did in. they really need that to get you in trouble? No, of course well, not. Well, apparently not, Sean, because then they, they gave me the ban hammer. They said I couldn't touch another computer in the school year, even to do my homework. Good. <laughs> yeah. So then I transferred. They probably should have given you a warning. Yeah. Before I should. banning you completely. Right. I was a good kid. Come on. So then. Opposite uh, of good. Uh, You're only using the computer to do bad things. Do you still think that that was not a bad thing? What? What you what you did? No, because I didn't do anything malicious. <laughs> okay. Malicious, like there's white, uh, black hat hacking and white hack hacking. Uh, white hackers do it just for the challenge and for the fun. Black Hat do it for profit and to hurt. Well, I wasn't doing either. either there's one of those a things. big area called the gray area, which you are firmly in in this how, instance. How so? Because it's a huge security vulnerability. Having all everyone's password on your personal computer—that's you don't want that. Nobody wants that. Uh, I mean, it was on their server, so if uh, those pa- those passwords were saved, un- I'm sure unencrypted on that server anyway. In fact, I did find a DAT file that had all their passwords in it. Stupid. <laughs> Stupid. The whole right. get out of here. The only thing I did uh, uh, hacking related back in the day was I logged in. It was the BBS days where yeah, again, this is getting super geeky. But really bulletin geeky. bulletin board systems were uh, the internet before the internet. You kind of had to dial up to a certain person who was running a program on their computer. You would connect to it and then uh, be able to interface with it, kind of like one at a time. It was like the internet, but one person at a time. And you could download porn. Yes, and yeah. it took forever. It did. Um. I created a war dialer, uh, and this is another thing that people don't know what it is. This, is this also not bad? <laughs> Something called a war dialer? Would uh, this, you classify <laughs> this as also not malicious? This is this is like a, a, a nuisance. It's annoying. It's annoying <laughs> for sure. A war dialer created. I created a list of every possible phone number in my area code uh-huh. in my uh, in my in my region. Then I created a program to dial each of those phone numbers. And all I had that program do is listen for three seconds for the dial tone to pick up. If it picked up with a modem, then I logged that phone number, and I created a list of modems that connected. And then I did the range of phone numbers for my high school, my local high school, and I found a bunch of phone numbers that connected. And I, I called them back with, the, with my modem software, and I logged in. And I found out that some of them were for the sprinkler system of the school. Okay. And I, <laughs> yeah. Nothing. No, why would why would this be bad? Uh, well, so then I logged in oh, and I, I, I like this. <laughs> so then I logged in and I I tried to change the schedule for the sprinkler system to run during the football games. I thought that would be hilarious. <laughs> so jealous. <Right? laughs> revenge jealous? of the nerds. Oh, this might God. literally be in one of the Revenge of the Nerds sequels. <laughs> We're going to ruin the boys' football game by getting them soaking wet. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe I'm saying I'm telling this. Yeah. You know, whatever. Yeah, I thought it was I thought it was hilarious. I thought it'd be fun to have a foot uh, the sprinkler system except I didn't know the schedule of the football games and I couldn't look it up and then um 
the end. Of, it was like near the end of the school stymied year. By, stymied by nerdiness. Yeah. They didn't it's even probably, know that football prob- games are on Friday night. <laughs> it's probably posted somewhere at school. It's always on Friday night. Yeah, That's I always know. when the fucking football games are. Never been to a football game, so... <laughs> <laughs> what it was a range of when they might be. Well, it might be Wednesday at three in the afternoon. Well, I, I did change it to when I thought the practices were held, and then I <laughs> forgot about it and never checked and see to see if uh, I never went out to the field to see if uh, it's it sprinkler the sprinklers came on during them because I was in class learning. I was in commercial arts at that time. You know what? It does bug me that like some computer skills are not taught in class, like in for in kid prison, as yeah. I like to call it. The idea that the idea that every kid needs to learn precisely. Um, uh, comparable amounts of like math and reading and science. Like, really, they need to learn an hour of each in blocks. You can't find any place to put computer programming in there yeah. or logic. Just like for just like for a month, right. like none of those subjects can suffer. We need the exact same amount in all of them. Why do I find that a little bit hard to believe? Yeah, it's so important. It's uh, people still don't value computer programming enough. It should be. One of the, if not the most important thing that we that we are taught, I, I probably probably right after math. Math is the number one most important subject. Then computers uh, and computer science, and then science. I think in that order, and then uh, and then literature. I mean, it's all important uh, being being able to be literate and communicate well. But I don't want to come off like we're saying nerds should not be bullied and punished. It's, that it's, should it's, absolutely it's, remain. They asshole. deserve it. Because they're trying to fuck up football games by hacking sprinkler systems. <laughs> this is so much fun. But I found I, some really interesting stuff with my war dialer, too. Like what? Oh, man. I found... Uh, N- nudie pictures in punctuation marks? Like <laughs> ASCII drawings of I naked yeah, ladies? There, was, there were a lot of those. I found some hidden BBSs. I found a lot of banks. Banks uh, Banks have a lot of back end. Don't ever connect to your devices at Maddox's <laughs> studio, by the way. <laughs> Who knows what's getting logged over here? Yeah, everything's logged, buddy. I analyze access logs like crazy. I always actually that's that's one of the uh, reasons my website uh, persists and exists is because I used to analyze my access logs so much. Uh, I just look at numbers and I look and see where people are coming from and all sorts of stuff like that. All right, all right. Um, here's the problem with thinking about computing as a skill that you need to learn. Right, this is from the the Guardian. It says we made the mistake of thinking that learning about computing is like learning to drive a car. And since a knowledge of internal combustion technology is not essential for becoming a proficient driver, it followed that an understanding of how computers work was not important for our children. Man, I cannot stress how important it is. Here's a quote, too. You'll like this one, Dick. Everybody in this country should learn how to program a computer because it teaches you how to think. That's a Steve Jobs quote. Yeah, well, he's trying to sell computers. Yeah. <laughs> oh, of course. Okay. That, oh, it's cynical. Maya Angelou didn't say it. Cynical. Right? She's trying to sell books. My, my or yes. poems, whatever. Yeah, um, I will say this too. Uh, this is when I learned com- uh, how to program for real. You, uh, you know, for years I thought I knew how to program. When I was 16 years old, I taught myself a lot of the programming that I that I knew back then, which was a um, uh, programming language I use is called Pascal, and I use C plus plus and C and all these things in assembly. I used to uh, do a little bit in assembly too. Um, assembly is like really old school. It's almost like it's the next step above machine code. It's the most it's the way you can write the most optimized code for a computer. Uh, I know that means nothing to anyone listening, but whatever. Anyway. Um, showing off. You're what? showing off how much you know about these computer languages. Yeah. So I, so, so I, um, I didn't really feel like I, – I thought I knew how to program with all this stuff, right? Uh-huh. But I didn't really learn how to program until I took a class in college called Discrete Mathematics. And I highly recommend anyone learning, wanting to learn how to program take a class in discrete mathematics. And we didn't even touch a computer throughout the entire semester. That's where I learned how to program because programming is all logic. You have to learn the logic tables. You have to learn the logic gates. You have to learn why things happen and if-then statements. Everything comes down to programming. It's the way you think. It's, mm-hmm. It really helps, I think, with critical thinking. Um, it can help with mathematics. It can help your whole entire life. It makes you think more logically in a more logically rigorous and structured way. That's my that's my also, solution. Also, maybe throw in some deadlifting. Okay. Right? Okay. Is it time for the last solution? Yeah. Cup holders. Cup, cup oh, holders. Great. Cup, cup holders. Cup holders is a huge ass solution. I've got two of them on me. You have two cup holders? Well, yeah, right here. My hands. Your my hands. lefty and righty. That's not enough cup holders. I have two cup holders in my car, constantly in need of more cup holders. Why? Because I've got more beverages. I, look, we've got to stay hydrated as a society. I don't know if you're aware of how hydrated you need to be at all times, but you need to be very hydrated. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give it's, you that. It's a sure. solution. 
with no negatives. Uh, Nuclear power, meltdowns, satellites. The government could be taking pictures of you or sending you thoughts. Okay. Right? Flight. Terrorists could fly your planes into buildings. Yeah, Huge yeah. drawback. Cup holders. Absolutely no drawbacks. They take up space in your car that you might not want for putting a cup in. What are you going to put in that space? Uh, I don't know. Maybe gadgets, uh, electronics, <laughs> things you program. <laughs> All your computer shit? Computers, yeah. You put your phone right in that cup holder, man. Yeah. It's multi-purpose. Jingles around, and they're never the right size. Cup holders are awful. No, cup you can't holders fit anything great. in them. Oh, man. And then you get, the cup holders are so bad, too, because if you put your cup in there, especially if you get a cold drink in a hot summer day, like an iced Americano, you put that right in your cup holder, right? And it, it just sweats and perspires, and then you got this puddle of sick, disgusting, moldy water in your cup holder that you can't ever clean out. It's just it gets water. sticky and shit. Your your hey, look. And every single cup is just holder. water. It doesn't get moldy and sticky. Well, it sits there and bacteria grows. I don't know. Maybe paper towels is another good solution that yeah. you should invest in. Yeah, in maybe your car. I w- I'll bring it in. Cup? Did, did you know that cup holders were not always found ubiquitously on cars? How about that? This is only a recent thing. In the fifties, there were no cup holders ever. Yeah. You had to buy it like a bar and a kitchenette and fasten it to your car. I remember in the 80s, uh, my parents bought a minivan, and they thought the cup holders were the best thing, man. And they yeah. would, they'd always go to this place called Pick and Save, and they'd sell these uh, these little hanging cup holders for your window. They're like oh, these, yeah. little, these little I remember plastic. those. <laughs> yeah, they were great. Little, we had so many of those. And I actually, I think I prefer that because then you can get rid of it when you don't want it. Look, what other solution is there where, where people will go that far out of their way to, to get? To I won't even save. get a flu shot, <laughs> but I will go buy a cup holder if I need one. Why won't you get a flu shot? Uh, be, you know, I'm not going to get sick. I'm libertarian. <laughs> like I gotta go, I gotta go to the store, and then I gotta have a sore arm while I'm at the gym doing my deadlifting. Come on, I don't, it's for old people. I don't need a flu shot. Right. You had a cup holder hanging off your piano. I did. They That's how for- invested I am. Not I had a cup holder hanging off my piano because I need a cup holder. What am I spilling beer all over the place? It's yeah. embarrassing. Uh-huh. I made a cup. The first thing I did when I got to Burning Man is make a cup holder for my bike. Then I made one for my pants. It is the first, if there was, if society was annihilated yeah. and we had to start over, that's what I would do. I would build, I would build, I would invent fire first. Right. Then I would invent making liquor. Okay. And then I would invent cup holders. Cup and holders. that's it. <laughs> okay. That's all I would do. That's what society would be. Bunch of drunk monkeys running around. It's a huge, it's a huge solution. Um, it's a solution to a small problem. And that problem is not that big. Maddox, you need to free your, you need to have your hands Free. Hands full? That's a big problem. Yeah. I need a cup holder to hold that. Otherwise, you're going to have people driving around with one hand. Do you know how dangerous that would be? Uh, sometimes I put a drink in my lap. This is you we're talking about. Yeah. Not, not everyone has this. this people are going to be spilling hot coffee on mm-hmm. their penises and burning themselves and then crashing into other cars and pedestrians. It will look like we're driving around in China out there. <laughs> are you kidding? We need cup holders. They're very important. Yeah. People use them every day. Um... Okay. People. I got a, I got a stats for that. I actually found a stats for that. Okay. I got a couple. 39% of us will try out the cup holder when we shop for a new car. 27% of us will completely reject a car because the cup holders are not satisfactory. That's stupid. And first what? of all, 39 per, 39% are testing the cup holder when they when they test drive a car. You don't? You no. wouldn't? Cuz I know I know that gravity w- works the way it should, <laughs> and I know if I put a thing down in a thing, it's just going to stay there because it's fucking uh physics. It just does. You know what? I challenge you to not use your cup holder for a month then. I do, I have my cup holder right now. It's filled with gum and bullshit. It's like my garage gum. clicker. Yeah, I have gum. <laughs> what do you mean gum? Just a bunch of gum for making chewed, out. Chewed gum? No, or no, no. Unchewed, unchewed, unchewed gum. gum. Yeah. Okay. I keep my gum in there. I keep and I put my cell phone in there. It's never full. I mean, it's never empty enough to put a cup in. It's fucking. It's like these round holes that I wish was square. I just wish That's it was a cup square. Holder. I just want a square thing that I can like a toolbox. Give me a fucking toolbox right in the middle of my console. Done. Listen. You you empty that gum and jacks oh, and magnets and whatever else you keep in your <laughs> cup holder out. You fill that cup holder with cement for one month. I don't. I think your life will be noticeably worse without that cup holder. Yeah, I agree. But again, it's not because huh? it's Big it's solution. not because it's a cup holder. It's because I don't have shit a place to put all my gum. That's just that's just the name of it. You can use it for whatever you want, but it is it's called round. a cup holder. It's round. It's inconvenient. Do you put do you put square things in round cups? All the time. What? 
Ice. Ice, ice cubes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what, though? Ice ice is kind of a box, and it comes out of an ice box, but of boxes. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, here we, here's how here's how stupid people are. Yeah. In 1989, the U.S. News and World Report was still calling cup holders crannies for drinking cups an unnecessary future frill. Can you imagine that? How stupid we were in 1989. I, that's I, I that's ridiculous. A future frill. It is one of the most basic necessities of driving. Is a cup holder. Hey man, drink before you fucking drive. <laughs> I've been saying that for years. <laughs> There is a fucking quote for you. Yeah, just um, I don't know. Get a bo- get. Here's a, here's a better solution: bottle caps for the bottle that you drink, and bottle then you just caps? set it what on the, the seat or you throw it on the ground, and it doesn't fucking matter. You throw just throw it on the ground. Yeah, a see, cup I'm drinking out of. You get a passenger, and then you have your passenger hold your fucking drink. Oh please, how's that for a cup As, holder? When is that? When in the universe is that happening? A passenger oh. helping you hold your drink? all the time with me, buddy. Then they're I gonna got- drink. Then they're gonna drink your drink. That better not. And they're gonna spill all over the place, jiggling them around, trying to use their phone with their nose. Well, then they're gonna have a problem of trying to get home with because they're not riding with me. <laughs> you spill a drink in my car, you're walking. All right, that's 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 my solution. Let's let's figure out what happened with these apples. Hey, how about that lady who spilled the coffee on herself? Remember yeah, that McDonald's yeah. lady? Um, because that model of car, that model of car, the probe. Yeah. Didn't have a cup holder. Oh, yeah. really? How about that? You want third degree burns all over your lap? I don't, but I'm also not an idiot. I cannot like spill a drink on myself. Oh, it's hot coffee. Filled <laughs> to the brim. What are you gonna sit there in the drive-thru? Make the line back up because you're sipping it out of it? Drive with one hand, yeah. mowing over f- uh, flowers and trees. I- you're the world you're proposing is sick. You know, the problem is McDonald's for making their fucking coffee too hot. And I oh. looked up I looked up the details Coffee's of this case. Wait, wait, wait. It, Isn't she a slip and fall person? No, no, she's Did, not. She, no, she, I, she I got looked, huge, she, horribly burned. She got seriously burned. burned. I, oh, thought, so she, I, thought, I thought she got busted for something else later. That might have happened, maybe, but I don't know. Maybe, but that's like irrelevant. For, you know, fraud. Right, but that's yeah. irrelevant. Um, she got busted for hacking into the passwords at her son's high school. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then not doing anything is totally innocuous. Still illegal. Victimless. Why is it illegal? I just gave this girl a bunch of roof and all. I didn't do it anything i just wanted her to have a good time i literally i didn't log into anyone's accounts i didn't give a shit like oh what am i gonna do log in and get their shitty homework assignments that, that aren't even as good as mine I what just, am i gonna do with their passwords it's a fucking extra credit assignment let the kid off the hook i just broke into this car to see if i could do it no big deal yeah if you shut the door you lock it up no one knows any better oh, oh, great fine um, what difference does it make you know who did this hmm. charles manson's followers they would break into houses and creep around just to show that they could do it and that's then they'd cool. leave that's and cool. lock it up. yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, not really. Okay, whatever. That's a little creepy because it's invasive. But I'm not like breaking. I'm that's, not, that's what you're no, no, talking you, no, about. The di- no, that's a bad analogy. The, uh, that's a more accurate, not no, a more accurate analogy <laughs> is if I created keys that worked for their house, right? Perfect replicas of their keys, and then didn't mm. use them. That's, and that's, ba- okay? that's a better analogy. Yeah, why not? <laughs> You need to go to jail. You need to go straight to jail. Why? If I have a key to someone's car and I never use it, or if I have a key to someone's house, because I have keys. If you had a key to someone's house, yeah, like a stranger's house, I do right they, now. They like a stranger. Yeah. Well, uh, no, not someone who knows you or has trusted you. This is just somebody. It's someone who lived in an apartment who gave me a key to their apartment and they moved out. So now a stranger lives there and I still have a key to their apartment. Yeah, but you didn't go out of your way to get it. Like if you just went out of your way to get a key to someone's place. Place, they have a they'd have a good cause for assaulting you i i think that's that's a huge invasion of privacy well that's illegal assault is illegal so is what you're all right let's no, get to no, the apple no, having let's, a key is not illegal buddy freedom of information <laughs> freedom of speech free speech just making a key making a key can we please do the apple <laughs> test make whatever key I want. yeah let's get to this let's get to this fucking apple test because i'm gonna shoot you shitheads down all right, the best apples, guys. What's the best your, apples. Okay, well, everybody rank your apples and then say what's your favorite. My, my, my order, I'm going to rank the top 50%. Mine was D, H, B, Wait, B. wait, wait. Oh, you have an H? Oh, and I didn't, I didn't like count the pair. G. Oh, you didn't count the pair? The pair was F. Well, we don't know it was a pair. That's just conjecture well, on conjecture. your part, quite frankly. Yeah. Okay, so after the pair, we had two? Yeah. Fucking it up. You okay. deleted the pair. I did. Yeah, I did. I, oh. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> Sean. Okay, you guys. You want to hear my favorite? What was your favorite apple, Dick? D. D was Dick's favorite apple. I'm going to guess that was the Fuji. Randy, 
Wait, what was your Sean? Uh, I had two. Okay, you had you, two. Well, you couldn't yeah, pick I mean, between two. No, because they're they're different. I think uh, I think one was the Honeycrisp and one was the Granny Smith. Well, which I'm which not letters? Guessing which apples letters? though? Yeah, well, we, no, uh, but uh, well, D. Okay, you like D as well. You like D. D. And then probably guess, influenced by me. Probably copied my answer. That's why I said yeah, we them. shouldn't say. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Did you hack Dick's uh, Dick's cell phone, Dick's computer? Did you right hack now? my mind in the yeah. big hologram that we're living in? You can in? look make at my a, sheet. Make so a then, password that you didn't use and then okay. get banned. If the pair was F, then the next one was G. That was uh, that was my other favorite. Okay. G, okay. H was the last, right? Okay, so you, you and I both had D, H, and G in the top four. Well, that was my top three. I know, but I, that was my top four because I threw a B in there. Oh, okay. Okay. And what were, you, Maddox, what were yours yeah. again? D, H, B, G, and C, but C was not great. Okay, D- she, was, H- she would be considered mealy as fuck. D yes. H B G and C in that order, right? Yeah. What were yours? Okay, my fa- my my top three was G. G was my favorite. Okay. And I know that's not the red delicious. It's I don't even know what apple that is. The G was the best. Uh, G and then E and then A. Okay, I gave E and A huge mealy as fuck meters. Yeah. Sean, yeah, what did you do with E and A? E and A. Uh, disgusting. Mealy well, as that, fuck. Okay, A was truly disgusting. Truly mealy as fuck. Uh, yeah, it was somewhat mealy. It had a, I wrote, weird dirt undertones. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, maybe that was your fingernails you were slobbering on. I don't have fingernails. Ew. <laughs> I've evolved to not need them anymore. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Randy, what are the results? Wait, wait, wait. Before Randy, Randy, I want to see if I got these apples right, right? Okay, let's go oh through one God. by one. Uh, right. Number one, uh, A, well, I thought was the Rome apple, right? A was the Rome apple. No shit. Why don't we do the, the names terrible. of the apples afterwards? Let's just see which, which one was the red delicious, right? And then um, you can go through the names. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, because the Red Del- Delicious is the one in question. That's okay. what the contest is that, about. Okay, Red Delicious was the one in question. It was E, right? Right. Randy? Was it E? It was the Red Delicious? Yeah. E yeah. was the Red Delicious. All so, right. So both, Sean, what did you say about E? What did you rate that? That was my second to last. Yeah. Um, mine was third to last counting the pair. I considered it highly mealy as fuck. I had an eight on the mealy as fuck meter And you had that on your top three. Yeah. It was a good apple. Not my favorite, but it was a good but apple. But your second favorite. Yeah, it was my second favorite, yeah. So you like, we've you've seen uh, both of us independently considered that apple mealy as fuck. It's not mealy. Well, but we both considered it mealy as you're fuck. You're full of shit. How are we full of shit? Because you guys knew. And How you're did just, we know? You're fuck, there's uh, some fuckery going on here. I didn't know. I didn't know. I would have ranked it. <laughs> if I had known, I would have put it above the pair. Okay. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Put it above the- so you know what's interesting, though, guys? My favorite apple um, uh, outside of this this contest is the Rome apple, and everybody thought that was the worst apple. Yeah, wait a minute, wait far. a minute. Your, your favorite apple was which one? A. Oh, no, no. My favorite on this uh, out of this contest was G by far. No, G, bro. G, G was the pink lady. That's going to be your was that the nickname. Pink, was that the pink lady? Yeah. That was, the, that was the most tasty apple, I think, of this entire batch. The pink lady was the most delicious, and it was also very crisp. That's a really good apple. And I, I'm I put surprised. that as fourth. Yeah, I'm surprised at how good that apple was because it's G, also G was good. Yeah, G was really good. The Pink Lady, I think, is the winner of this contest. But um, guys, go to PinkLady.com. Enter <laughs> promo code <laughs> Big. Hey, where you was get free the- stickers on your order of Pink Lady apples? What's up? Where was the Granny Smith? The Granny Smith. Okay, l- l- yeah. You didn't okay. put it in. Okay, there. here. Here. Ah. We got the pair. Go- yeah, you could tell. You could spot a Granny. Sp- you could smell yeah. a Granny Smith. It's really That's hard. worthless. Okay, yeah. you didn't okay. put it in. That makes sense. Uh, apple A, Maddox. What do you think it was? That was the Rome apple. Okay, right? Sean, did you also guess the names of the apples for some weird reason? Uh, no, just a couple of them. I thought that was going to be the Golden Delicious. Okay, it because, was the Rome. Okay, it was now, the Rome apple. Now the thing that you so the thing about a Rome apple is it's a very dry apple and it has that quality. It's almost like a graininess to it. Yes, and that's, I, that's what the term mealy means. It means like meal, like no, meal, no, grainy. But, okay, grain. Okay, okay corn meal, bran meal, <laughs> but yeah. a mealy red Bunch delicious. Of dirt. But a really red delicious is kind of like soggy and mealy, and I don't like that. I like this dryness to it. That's I really like a, a, a Rome apple. I think um, you just like rice. Like you like the texture of rice <laughs> yeah. in your mouth, no matter what it is, a fruit or. Get out of here. Um, number two, well, the B. Okay, B, B was. I thought those B was Fuji, right? Sean, I didn't. Okay, guess that yes, one. yes, correct. There were Fuji. a lot of them that uh, Fuji. I didn't know. Yeah, Fuji. Well, B I, was I Fuji. didn't know any Well, when of them. I picked them out, I was like, I'm going to get a bunch of them that look similar, but they're, you know, they're all different, and they all tasted different, even though they look similar on the uh, outside. Okay, C. What do you think C was, man? C was the golden, the golden Sean, delicious. What did you think about uh, that one? I didn't 
uh, you didn't? That was my second or to the least gullet. favorite. It's no, you got to pick one. You can't be doing both. This is a, a game show. Golden Bring up there. Hey, Alex, I'll buzz in. You know, maybe it's Montesquieu. Maybe it's Voltaire. I don't know. What do you think? I <laughs> say correct. 60% Golden Delicious, 40% Gala. I think it's Okay, gold, you're golden. wrong then. What it's is Gala. It? It's Gala, yeah. Gala, sorry. Gala, yeah. Gala. Oh, that was close. All right. Uh, How about D, D? D was, oh, I also thought D was Fuji. That might be Honeycrisp then. What was well, D? you got to give me a, a percentage well, again. Well, okay, then it's not Fuji because I already guessed that one. And it's I, think, be- I think D's Honeycrisp. Well, Honeycrisp, yeah. Okay, Sean wins. He got it first. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> okay. Good bullshit ass. E. Who's e. reading this? Randy has uh, <laughs> horse shit written on for E. I don't know. What Did a fucking you, you asshole. Guess that? Shithead asshole dickheads. That's a, you know, that's not a, bl- uh, this is not a blind test. Okay, it has to be a double blind test, Randy. You can't write down horse. Did you write down horse shit on that? No, of course not. What did you write down? <laughs> down red delicious. Yeah. Or R delicious. Does the R stand for really gross delicious? Okay. No. Everyone got to pair, right? Well, I, was this test a success? I think H. Determine? No, because wait, he wait, didn't what was win. H? What was if H? he had won, it would have been. <gasps> what is it, a success scientifically? The, no, it wasn't. Not even scientifically. Why? This entire test is fucking bunk. No. Bogus test. Now you know how we felt <laughs> <laughs> last season. <laughs> Dude, Randy, what kind of fucking slap dick? Uh, test uh, no no controls except for the pair. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Hey, Randy, what? you did a great job. What was H? H was golden delicious. Oh, really? H was golden delicious. Yeah. See, oh, H and better, I, than I, better than I thought. Yeah, it tasted like the honey crisp, the golden delicious. I didn't get that. I rated yeah. it way lower. Yeah, I rated it a five. Guys, my my first favorite again was the pink lady. I, I I'm surprised how good it was. Mm-hmm. And then the red delicious was my number two. And then uh, my number three was the Rome apple. I like Rome apples. Most okay. people don't. And I understand that. And you know what? It's not necessarily a bad thing for something to be mealy. But Red Delicious is not fucking mealy. Dude, it got it got high on my mealy as fuck meter. Get a fucking Red Delicious right now. It, it, it has Throw the them crispest, all away. It has the crispest crunch of any of these apples, except maybe the, the Honey Crisp. The Honey Crisp is a really crisp apple. Whatever. All right, my favorite was... Who cares? What, what was your favorite? <laughs> honey Crisp. Uh, honey Crisp, Golden Delicious, and... Fuji. So I guess that's what I'm buying from now on. Great. Go ahead and buy your floral bullshit Fuji apple. Fuji apples are so fucking floral. You might as well be eating a, a drink a bottle of perfume. Call it a day. That shit apple. And the pink lady. Speaking of perfume, the pink lady was your favorite. I always like switch up to I, pink I, I lady. I like pink ladies. All right, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my solutions are fire and cup holders. And my solutions are computer programming and iTunes. Love iTunes. Go vote that, what, up? Yeah, yeah, vote up iTunes. Vote up iTunes. It's a big solution. Okay. You want to know why I didn't call back last week? It was because I was paratrooping into all the chicks' houses that you're going to have sex with in the future and fuck them first. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't feel so good, does it? No, it really doesn't. Who is that? Is that, that was weird Matthew McConaughey. Weird Matthew McConaughey? Okay. All right. That's it. <laughs>